मॉर्निंग टू ऑल ऑफ यू आई एम सोनू जांगड़ा फैकल्टी इन फिजिक्स उजल कोचिंग कैंपस वेलकम्स यू अगेन इन अवर यूट्यूब चैनल सो टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस इन न्यू फ्रेश चैप्टर एंड दैट वाज टेकन फ्रॉम द मॉडर्न फिजिक्स एंड इन सीबीएसई क्लास ट्वेल्थ दिस चैप्टर इज कॉल्ड semi conductor device okay so today we are going to discuss about semi conductor device and in today's class we are going to discuss only four topics and the first one is need of semi conductor why we need semi conductor in today's life we just depends completely on the semiconductor and the future is also depends upon the semiconductor it is very very important chapter to know our increase our knowledge also and or uh, from for your exam point of view it is very important chapter and the second one is the band theory in solids second chapter is band theory in uh, solids and and third topic is conductor semiconductor and insulators in your uh, earlier classes we already discussed about conductors and insulators but now we are going to discuss conductor semiconductor and in so later on the basis of this band theory which was discussed by uh, later on and fourth topic is a type of semiconductor how many type of semiconductor we are used in our life that is very interesting topic so let we start uh, the first topic why we need a semiconductor the question arises in our mind students that uh, in today's life in modern life we completely based on the semiconductors technical uh, <coughs> technical time is uh, growing up so we completely based on this type of semiconductor so what is this semiconductor and why we need this semiconductor what is the important characteristics of this semiconductors how they help uh, helpful for us in our life how to uh, they increase our time uh, sorry they uh, decrease our time of use of time so uh, there is many uh, important uh, topic important things about the semiconductor so uh, first uh, we are going to discuss uh, little bit about the conductors and insulators okay so what is the difference between conductor insulator and semiconductor based on the previous uh, uh, theory that is the sum of the materials or sum of the solids okay uh, mainly in this chapter we are going to discuss only solid uh, solid um, materials okay so it is also called as solid state physics okay solid state physics modern physics is uh, it is a part of a modern physics and it is called solid state physics okay so in this chapter we are going to discuss the solid materials and on the uh, class classification as earlier we are uh, describe we are distribute the solid materials in three categories one is conductor and, and second one is insulator and third one is semiconductor and another important uh, uh, description and in important uh, uh, solid material is also described that is superconductor it is discussed later on in your higher classes okay so now we are going to discuss only about conductors insulators and semiconductors so what about uh, conductors conductors are those solid materials which are allow the electric current and heat to flow throw them okay so this is a very simple definition uh, in your earlier classes that is the materials which uh, uh, are allow the heat or allow the electric current flow through it it called conductors and uh, for the example silver is the best conductor silver is the best conductor at all uh, minimum value of resistance and resistance cannot be zero of the conductors uh, silver is the least resistance but not zero and uh, after that uh, insulators are the materials which are opposite to the conductors that the material which are which do not allow the electric current or heat through them uh, like all the non metals like that any non metal nitrogen phosphorus uh, like this is phosphorus okay so phosphorus is a non metal which cannot allow the electricity or heat to pass through them so these are the insulators and these are the semi and these are the sorry these are the conductors so these uh, insulators have high value of resistance so they cannot allow the electric current and somehow in our periodic tables all the metals which are falls on the left side of the periodic table are considered as the conductors and the materials which are falls on the right side of the periodic table are called non metals okay so metals and non metals are the two categories which are divided on the basis of uh, their conductivity the electric current is either passed or not so these are the two type of material but later on after 18th of century there is a twist in this idea that some of the material in the periodic table which uh, sometimes uh, allow the electricity to pass through them and sometime they cannot allow the pass the electricity so uh, uh, this category is arises in our uh, <coughs> mind so this is considered as the semiconductor semi means it is sometime uh, allow the current and sometime it cannot allow the current so these materials are called the semiconductor okay so these are the conductor and these are the insulators the metal which having properties lies between conductors and semi uh, insulators is called as semiconductor uh, from this name semi and conductor okay so 
which materials are taken in this category uh, semiconductor devices the material which have four valence electron four valence electron in their last cell are considered as the semiconductor why why they are uh, considered as the semiconductor we are discuss one by one uh, we are taking an example of sodium okay so first of all sodium is a metal and uh, another one is a calcium or oh, sorry chlorine chlorine is the known metal and uh, <coughs> atomic number of sodium is 11 and atomic number of chlorine is 17 so okay so now uh, in solid state physics we are right here the electronic configuration or the cell electron distribution 2 8 1 and here 2 8 and 7 how many electrons in the last cell of sodium are one electron and how many electrons in the last cell of the chlorine that are seven electrons okay so now now this sodium this sodium is allow to this sodium is uh, reject one electron or uh, leave one electron to complete uh, its, its state and uh, become a stable material and this chlorine needs one electron to complete its uh, last sub cell last cell uh, to complete the eight electrons in this cell so it is taken the electrons from the materials which lose the electron and these metals are gain the electrons from the non metals who lose the electrons but what about uh, aluminium aluminium as atomic number 13 it, it has uh, configurations like 2 8 and 3 similarly magnesium has atomic number 12 it is considered as 2 8 and 2 so all these materials all these materials have 1 2 and 3 electron in the last cell so they are uh, always lose 1 and 2 and 3 electrons and to complete their cells and <coughs> But about chlorine, chlorine has seven electrons like that uh, uh, fluorine that is equal to fluorine uh, and uh, uh, sulfur phosphorus like that phosphorus the atomic number are 15 that is equal to 2, 8 and 5. There are five electrons in their valence cell uh, like oxygen, oxygen is that 16, 2, 8 and 6. So there are six, five, six, and seven electrons in their last subcell. So they can, they, they, uh, they will gain electrons from the other metals, uh, other metals uh, in the left side of the table. Okay. So there are the possibility to gain one, two, and three electrons, and there are the possibility to lose one, two, and three electrons. Okay. So this uh, sodium, sodium makes a ionic bond with the chlorine to complete their cells and there is a sodium chloride is formed okay but what about what about the situation here now you can take an example of carbon the carbon is atomic number six so the atomic electronic configuration is two and four so what does it mean there are four valence electron in their last subshell and another example is that silicon that is atomic number 14 that is two eight and four again it has a four valence electron in this last subshell and what about uh, germanium it is 32 atomic number it is as right as 2 8 18 and 4 okay so all these matter materials which have four valence electron in the last cell they are considered as the semiconductor the carbon family is taken or considered as the semiconductor but but there is a twist later on in this chapter carbon is uh, falls in the category of semiconductor but later on we have uh, after we discuss with the band theory then we, we distinguish that carbon is not a uh, semiconductor carbon is uh, in the category of insulators and after that two uh, elements s n and pb which are also considered as the conductor category and this carbon is falls in the insulator category so these are the insulators non metals and these are the conductors they are metals and these are the semiconductor but in carbon family there are only two elements that is silicon and germanium which are taken in the category of a semiconductor but carbon sn and pb are not considered as semiconductor why uh, we are discuss later on we are find out the answer of this question that why carbon is not considered as the semiconductor while they have four valence electron in their last subcell or germanium and silicon are considered as the semiconductor they are also five or four valence electron in their last uh, cell okay so the, the elements which are taken in this category are called tetravalent tetravalent elements okay tetravalent means there are four valence electrons okay and the left side to the carbon family there is a boron family they have three valence electron in their last subcell so they are considered as trivalent 
materials okay and the uh, line uh, the elements which uh, falls right side of the carbon family that is the nitrogen family they have last electron last subset have five valence electrons so they are considered as a pentavalent elements okay so um, uh, our chapter is uh, uh, moving uh, around this carbon family nitrogen family and boron family so it is very important chapter to discuss these three uh, important groups uh, in this chapter uh, carbon family boron family and nitrogen family uh, as we are uh, discuss later on okay now now we just classify the three type of elements three type of materials from the periodic table they are considered as conductors semiconductors and insulators okay now now we are just going to why we need of semiconductor it means that in semiconductors in semiconductors the first important thing is that why we need semiconductor why we need semiconductor first one is that semiconductors are the material which are current control device okay current control device so we can control the we can control the current okay we can control the current in conductors the current is not controlled okay in semiconductor we just use them according to our need okay if we uh, want if we want more current then there is more current if we want less current there will be less current okay so it is a current control device okay and uh, in today's generation today's life we uh, want that everything is in our control okay so these are the current control device after that number second is that uh, there is unidirectional okay they are unidirectional means there are current is allow only in one direction okay if you take an example of a conductor then the current is flowing in the both the directions but in the semiconductor current is always allowed in the one direction if they allow current in one direction they cannot allow the current in the another direction so it means that they are working in one direction they are not working in another direction so they are considered they are used as the switch on and off situation when they are when current is flowing in this direction there is switch is off and there is current is moving in this direction the current is on okay so this is <coughs> later on we are going to discuss in this chapter uh, transistors uh, and diodes uh, uh, diode rectifiers and there are many things uh, which are uh, uh, from the modern life okay so now these are the two important things that why we need semiconductor semiconductors are current control device and they are unidirectional materials okay now now what are the uh, another important things about that uh, why use semiconductor comparison to the conductors okay insulator is not uh, uh, useful to us we are going to only discuss about the modern technical uh, life technical future it means that in this time we want the materials who conduct electricity and uh, make our life easy so okay so there is no discussion of insulators but what about conductors and semiconductors semiconductors are allowed to current sometimes but sometimes they cannot allow the currents conductors allow the current is every time but after that why we need semiconductors it means that semiconductor are current control device and another Another important thing is that uh, semiconductors are easily easy to handle. Easy to handle means easy to handle means they are very they handles very easily. They are, are of small size. Okay, and after that uh, number four is that uh, no vacuum creation is requirement. So no vacuum creation is requirement. This is a very important property about the semiconductor. That is uh, uh, before semiconductor we are using the conductors and uh, in <coughs> in the past time we are using computers computers televisions there is a cathode ray tube cathode ray tube okay so computers and televisions our ship or monitors are working on the cathode ray tube crt okay crt is the cathode ray tube so this cathode ray tube it is the uh, glass tube and there is a vacuum is created in this tube okay vacuum is created in this tube and it is of all it is of large very large size and there is a vacuum is created in this area vacuum is created in this area now what we do there is a cathode and anode positive and a negative there is a positive charge there is a negative charge electric field is applied across the uh, vacuum tube or cathode ray tube and now there is vacuum is there inside the tube and after when we just connect a filament of tungsten here if you connect a tungsten filament here and uh, apply a high voltage so this this tungsten material is heated up and eject electron and why there is some coating of the coating of barium barium oxide okay ba2 barium oxide coating is here so that's why it is easy to eject the electron because the work function of barium is very very low so electrons are ejected from this device and if these electrons are moving in this vacuum area they are attracted by the 
positively and of the uh, electric field applied okay so now these electrons are moving from this point to this point in the vacuum if there is no vacuum if there is gas molecules are uh, or uh, another, another another things are there then these electrons have decreased or lost its kinetic energy so they cannot reach at the suitable or, or the fixed time so there is a loss of energy and we want that there is no loss of energy then there is a vacuum is created so in this tube there is a vacuum creation is very important thing but in semiconductors we don't need to create any vacuum so these are very importance over the conductors okay so another important thing is that number five conductors are cheap cheap reliable cheap and reliable easy to handle easy to taken out anywhere uh, <coughs> this this monitor this television this computer is not taken out anywhere but now in today's life the mobile phones laptops which are put in your bags and take anywhere in your uh, journey or anywhere okay so this is very cheap and this is very uh, reliable light weight and another important thing is that no loss of power no loss of power it means it means that power is no loss uh, in electric bulb there is a tungsten filament it consume a lot of power uh, and uh, electric electricity lot of uh, consume lot of power of electricity so uh, these semiconductors are not uh, required and much loss of energy uh, much loss of energy so that's why they have no loss of power consumption okay power consumptions okay now seventh thing is seventh point is that there are no high voltage required high voltage high voltage not required to start a normal cathode ray tube we just need 100 voltage minimum voltage of 100 volt is required to uh, switch on the cathode ray tube but for the semiconductors we just need only one two or three or four volts uh, electricity or voltage energy to require to own the semiconductor so they are very useful uh, characteristics overcomes the uh, conductor so that's why in today's life we completely based on the semiconductors and now semiconductors are discussed not by the theory discussed earlier because this theory only gives the idea about that the conductors are the material who allow the currents insulators are the elements which cannot allow the currents and semiconductors are the materials which sometimes allow the current and which sometimes not allow the current but this is not the definition in, to, in this chapter in today's class we are going to discuss how band theory explain the semiconductors solid uh, semiconductors insulators and conductors in their uh, various case okay so now we are just going to discuss about the second topic band theory in solids and this is the base of this chapter if you uh, easily understand uh, or tackle the band theory of solids uh, this was not considered in the syllabus of cbsc but but it is very necessary uh, only the uh, idea only the uh, description of this theory is uh, included in the syllabus uh, but we just uh, discuss completely band theory understand the band theory very easily and after that the complete chapter is very easy to us okay but if you do not understand the band theory properly then you cannot uh, read the complete chapter in, in an easy way okay so now uh, just we just starting a band theory of solids so in from starting the band theory this is a band theory uh, semiconductors 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 are silicon and germanium okay first we are going to discuss two type of semiconductors are used uh, silicon and germanium in your uh, life uh, in the practical work or practical use okay because silicon and germanium are only the semiconductor carbon is not considered semiconductor and uh, snlpb are not considered as the semiconductor we are discussed later on now but now what about the band theory band theory is a theory which is defined to we define to understand the semiconductors behavior uh, with their conductivity or electron uh, move electrons mobility and there are some different things like okay so now <coughs> what about band theory consider there is a there is a sodium metal okay there is a sodium metal and there are one valence electron in the last cell okay there is one valence electron in the last cell how many electrons are there in the first cell two electrons second cell eight electrons are there 281 is the electronic configurations 281 is the electronic configuration of the sodium so there are 2 8 and 1 is the electronic configuration now what about sodium in our uh, earlier chapter in the atom and nuclei we are just going to deal with the uh, single isolated atom okay single isolated atom okay 
in the chapter atom and nuclei we are going to uh, deal with the isolated atoms mean a single atom there are no another atoms uh, uh, outside there or nearby the atom sodium atom okay so what is the energy of the electrons is discussed in this chapter it was given by the formula 1 by lambda is equal to r 1 by n1 square minus 1 by n2 square this is the famous empirical formula discussed on uh, discussed in atom and nuclei by this formula we are just going to discuss we are just going to find out the wavelength wavelength of the radiation when one electron is jumps from their energy level they are allowed energy level to the another higher energy levels and after this he just comes back to the same level by uh, radiate some energy some photons of the energy h nu okay so why they why they describe the energy levels okay so this is the uh, energy level diagram of sodium energy level diagram of sodium uh, for the isolated atom i discussed here this is your nucleus this is your nucleus this is your first cell so there are two electrons are there in the first cell and after that this is the second cell there are eight electrons one two three four five six seven eight and this is the third cell there are only one electron single electrons is there okay now we have a formula to find out the energy of the electron what is the energy of the electron the formula is given that e is equal to minus 13.6 upon me n square into z square electron volt do you know the formula the formula is equal to e is equal to minus 13.6 upon n square into z square and formula is determined by the bohr theory okay this formula is discussed by bohr theory okay students bohr theory is de uh, determine this formula energy of the electron but bohr theory is only applicable for the uh, light atoms or the atoms which have only uh, single uh, electron uh, that is uh, for hydrogen atoms okay this theory is failed after the uh, atomic number increase by 2 3 and 4 up to okay so now if we put here atomic number of uh, hydrogen is 1 the formula is minus 13.6 upon n square electron volt where n is the number of orbitals number of uh, orbitals okay now what about these two electrons these two electrons are lies in the first orbit so energy of these electrons is minus 13.6 into what is the value of z z is 11 11 into 11 upon there is one square okay so this is the energy of electron in the sodium in the first ground state or first state okay this is the ground state and it means that it is the first energy level okay first orbital what about the second level in the second level there are eight electrons these eight electrons having the energy minus 13.6 into 11 into 11 upon 2 raised to power 2 that is equal to 4 electron volts okay so what is the value of energy of these all the electrons so in this in the last chapter we are going to discuss that we just uh, <coughs> determine that electrons are in the same energy level same orbital same state same cell having the same energy okay all the electrons all these electrons having the same energy okay all these electrons which are allowed in the first energy level have the same energy all the electrons allowed in the third level have the same energy and this theory explain that there is no electron is if find in this region in between the two energy levels okay any electron cannot find in this energy level either electron is find in this level in this level or in this level or any other levels but energy of the electron is not um, find in this level okay so what about the third level here uh, formula is that minus 13.6 into 11 into 11 upon 3 raised to power 2 electron volt so this is the energy of this electron which is find in the last cell so this electron is called the free electron free electron in conductors the condition that if there are free electrons in the last sub cell then the current is allowed to flow okay so in all the metals electrons are free in the last sub cell either they are one two and three electrons okay uh, but in semiconductors or in carbon family there are four valence electrons there is a problem four valence electrons are not allowed to flow of the current in the single atom in a single atom uh, we are going to discuss later on so now what we uh, understand about this uh, energy level diagram of Bohr theory each electron is in the same level having the same energy because these electrons cannot disturb their position they cannot fall to the nucleus they cannot fall because according to Bohr's second postulate the angular momentum of all the electrons moving around the nucleus in their various cells is equal to integral multiple of h upon 2 pi this is a famous Bohr theory Bohr's approximation Bohr's postulates it means that these electrons cannot jumps in this in this area in this gap 
so there are no energy level allowed for the electron in this gap electrons either found in this level or in the second level third level fourth level okay why electron jumps in the second level if we increase the energy if we give some extra energy to the atom then some of the electron gain extra energy and jumps and jumps to the jumps to the second level third level and this electron is not is not stable not stable in this second level second level electrons are not stable in the third level so they are unstable in their different cells so they comes back in the same level to become stable uh, to become stable then they lose some energy if we, they if they jumps to the higher levels they gain energy if we, they come back to the same level they liberate the energy they release the energy and this energy is moving in the form of radiations e is equal to h nu and energy of these orbitals are given by the formula this formula e is equal to minus 13.6 upon n square okay and uh, when the electron jumps from the second level to first third to first fourth to first these lines are considered as a, a in the hydrogen spectrum lines given by the lyman bamar parsons brackets funds lines are given but this theory is only discussed for single atoms isolated atoms but in this chapter we are dealing with the number of atoms just comes closer to each other to make a crystal form or make a solid then this theory is failed this theory is not working for the for the number of atoms or a group of atoms when they when in the solids there are number of atoms are comes closer to each other and the distance between the two atoms is interatomic separation is very very low that is equal to 10 to the power minus 10 meter uh, uh, of the level of a, of the order of a uh, fermi or uh, angstrom okay so <coughs> the same theory is not applied if we apply the same theory for the solids then the theory was failed after that this bohr theory is failed the solid band theory is explained by the uh, scientist later on okay so if we understand this theory now we are going to discuss about the band theory what happens here okay this electron has the energy given by this formula fixed energy okay this electrons and cannot gain its energy cannot lose its energy if we gain it energy it becomes go on the higher level not in this gap but what happens with the solids okay so now discuss we are discuss here there is a there is a silicon atom okay there is a silicon atom the same energy level diagram is uh, taken for the silicon atom okay so this is for sodium sodium is a conductor in this chapter we are going to deal with the uh, semiconductor so we take an example of semiconductor it is 14 it is 2 8 and 4 there is a nucleus first cell second cell and third cell okay so uh, there is two electrons in the first sub cell there are eight electrons in the second sub cell second cell and there is uh, are four electrons in the third cell okay this is the first excited state this is the second excited state there are four electrons valence electrons there are eight electrons completely filled there are two electrons completely filled but now but now these all the four electrons uh, takes the same value of energy okay what is the energy of these atoms minus 13.6 into what is the value of z z is 14 it means 14 into 14 upon what is the value of n 1 2 and 3 it is 3 raised to power 2 electron volts so this is the energy of all the four electrons which are found in the second excited state of silicons okay it means that it means that uh, these electrons cannot change their energy but this diagram is valid only for isolated silicon atom isolated silicon atom in a single atom there is no solid is formed solid is formed then there are number of atoms are comes closer to each other so this theory is not working at this point because uh, what is the disturbance what is the disturbance create here when the two atoms comes closer or three atoms comes closer or number of atoms are comes closer to each other then this theory is failed okay so now <coughs> now these electrons are stable they cannot participate to flow all of the current because they are completely bound these are also completely field sub cell these electrons are attracted by this nucleus or centripetal forces are uh, applied on this particle electrons so they are moving around the nucleus these are also moving around the nucleus but in the last cell these electrons are considered as valence electrons or they are very far away from the nucleus so they are loosely bound to the nucleus so if we give some energy to the electrons then first these electrons gain some energy and jumps in another level but for a single atom they cannot jumps in this level or in this level they are going in the fourth cell okay so this is the story behind the single atom isolated atom description described by the Bohr theory but what about the solid theory now we are going to discuss here okay now <coughs> okay what happens with the silicon this is a silicon 
there are four valence electron in this silicon atom okay uh, i just discuss about the valence electron only there are eight electrons also in the second cell there are two electrons also in the first cell and there is a nucleus also but we cannot discuss on it now this is a single uh, silicon atom after that there is another silicon atom is here there are also four valence electron in this silicon every silicon atom has the four valence electron in the last sub cell so now now the, what about this electron this electron is freely rotating freely moving around the nucleus in this own uh, atom okay but now if two atoms are comes closer to each other then this nucleus having positive charge this nucleus having also positive charge this electron when moving from this side attracted by this nucleus this electron is moving from this side attracted by this nucleus so these electrons are either attracted or repel by the different different atoms nearby atoms because in solids there is no two atoms i just discuss uh, only two atoms here in solids there are number of atoms are come closer to each other so every electron moving in their last sub cell are disturbed by the neighboring nucleus and neighboring electron this electron is repelled by this electron this electron is repelled by this electron this electron is attracted by this nucleus so there is disturbance created and the electrons cannot stable their energy cannot make, cannot co take constant value of their energy energy is distributed energy is changed okay but if the distance between the two atoms is not much much less then there is different situation if the atoms are very far away from this consider first of all one atom and one atom are very far away so there is no interaction between the atoms this electron is moving around their nucleus this electron is moving around their nucleus they cannot disturb by the nearby atoms because their nearby atoms are very far away now when the two atoms comes closer to each other the separation between them is decreased continuously then there is a some interaction started there is either attraction or repulsion with the nucleus nucleus electron 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 nucleus and nucleus electron but now if we decrease the distance as much possible up to the order 10 to the power minus 10 meter okay then interaction is increased and their energy is distorted all the energy levels are mixed together and we cannot predict which electron is moving in which nucleus which electron is of which atom we cannot predict okay so there is a mixing of energy levels and we cannot predict them after that if we decrease the distance as much more possible then up to the last moment uh, until then there is some different changes are occurs and they are very interesting changes are there their energy levels are separated one another first they are different separately after that they come closer their energy levels are uh, disturbed to each other and after that uh, close to each other one more time then their energy levels are mixed to each other we cannot predict and after that interesting change again the energy levels are separated splitted again and one energy level which is completely filled all the energy levels are lies in this area but this area is completely empty there is no energy level in this uh, area there are no electron in this level so this is a this is a area possible area in this number of electrons are false is called as the valence band and another area in which there are no electrons are found it is called the conduction band so this area is considered as the bands okay this that's why it is called as a band theory but but we are going to discuss some important things also we are going to discuss with a graph help of a graph this energy level but before this uh, start this uh, uh, band theory i just take an example energy level diagram is discussed uh, in the 8th chapter again now uh, i just rough it there is no any space here so now this is for uh, sodium we cannot uh, discuss about the sodium because sodium is a conductor if you are going to discuss about the insulator uh, semiconductors here now energy level diagram okay this is the energy level diagram in this y axis we are taken energy levels and in this time we are taken the number of orbitals okay so so what is happens here for silicon atom for isolated silicon atom there are first energy level is two electrons that is 1s1 what is the electronic configuration is that 1s2 2s2 2p6 3s2 and 3p2 2 to 4 6 okay 2 to 4 6 10 12 14 okay so this is the electronic electronic configuration of a silicon atom okay this is isolated silicon atoms so this is your first 
level the first level is that one s level there are two electrons are lies in this level okay this is the allowed energy level all the electrons in the first cell there are two electrons possible uh, in the first uh, cell all the two electrons having the same energy one is the up spin and another is the down spin okay so these two electrons are falls in the same level after that for the second level there is two s state okay 1s2 2s2 okay again it is 2s2 so there is again two electrons are considered in this energy level all these two electrons having the same energy they cannot change their energy for the isolated atom uh, the crystal in the crystal form there is some disturbance created but for a single atom there is no interaction uh, allowed okay for what about the 2p6 so this is the third level 2p there are six electrons are allowed in this level so about the valence you you do you do you know about the valence band theory in the chemistry there there are three uh, pair three pairs are of electrons are there uh, two 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 and there are six electrons are allowed in the p level okay and the two electrons are allowed in the s level and in d level there are 10 in 14 in the f okay well, we cannot discuss because uh, we are going to discuss only silicon and germanium so atomic number are 14 and 32 not more than uh, 3p2 and 3s2 okay now uh, next one is 3s2 what about this 3s2 so there are two electrons are there okay what about the 3p2 this is the 3p it is 3p level the 3p there are only two electrons but but there is a there is a problem how many electrons allowed in this level there are six electrons are allowed in this level this is the complete shell 3s2 and 3p6 com combined together to make the uh, eight electrons are allowed okay but uh, in firstly we can uh, fill the two electrons of the s level it is completely filled and after that uh, we fill the first electron second electron third electron so energy levels are energy uh, orbitals are fit like that one electron one electron one electron and after that they are in the pairs fill up in the pairs okay so now one electron is allowed here one electron is allowed here but there are only two electrons in silicon in p orbital p cell there are only two electrons are considered okay there are only two electrons are considered okay so now <coughs> So now what we are going to discuss here, uh, four quantum states are empty till now because in silicon atomic number is and with the 14 so only two electrons are allowed in the p level there are four more electrons are also allowed to fill in the uh, in the uh, p, p orbital but there we have only two electrons so four cells are empty one and uh, two three and four okay these four space are empty in this level okay but now this is the graph this is the energy level diagram for the silicon atom this is isolated silicon atoms all the electrons are allowed in this energy level consider this energy is minus 13.6 minus 13.6 into 14 into 14 upon me that is one square all the two electrons takes the same energy all the two electrons same the same energy all the six electron takes the same energy this is the story behind the isolated atom but now the twist is there if one if one atom is extra atom is considered here there are two silicon atoms so again 1s2 2s2 2p6 3s2 3p2 if there is another silicon atom is comes closer to first silicon atom then what happens energy of 1s2 electrons so two electrons are more there so these two electrons are allowed in the same level because the electrons are allowed in the s orbital or in the first energy states take the same energy level but but for isolated atoms they have the same energy but if they there are two atoms come closer to each other then the energy of the electrons is disturbed energy of the electron is disturbed why because there is an interaction mutual interaction between the atoms started and these electrons are moved freely around the nucleus disturbed by the nearby atoms and there are number of atoms uh, in a crystal they can disturb each other so their energy level is not fixed now their energy level start changes but but there is a uh, uh, important thing is that the energy levels are changed in very small change okay there is a very small change like that for isolated atoms energy levels are e e1 e2 e3 so energy of all the electrons is considered as e1 for the first level e2 for the second level e3 for the third level but for number of atoms are comes closer to each other then energy level are considered as e1 plus delta e or minus delta e what does it mean it means that energy of the electron is not stable not constant for the number of atoms comes closer 
to each other but their energy is not change much more there is a small change in the energy either they increase their energy or either they lose the energy so we can write here even plus minus delta e it means that some energy is increase or some energy is decrease so electron is not stable in the same energy level which is the allowed energy level for isolated system but if there are two electrons two atoms are comes closer three atoms come closer 100 electrons 100 atoms are comes closer then their energy is disturbing but there is uh, a important thing is also defined here these first level or the or it is called the ground level ground level electrons cannot change the energy there is no more there is no predictable change is found in the first energy level not in the second energy level this energy level is the energy changes only for the outermost orbitals do you understand do you understand the uh, the interaction of the electron is disturb the outermost electron because this electron is disturb outermost electron not the nucleus okay this is very important thing to discuss all the electrons are not disturbed only the outermost cell electron or valence electron can disturb by the nearby atoms i can disturb the nearby electron for the another atom but this electron is allowed in the last cell okay electron is in the deep inside the atom cannot be repelled or interact or attract by me because there is a very large distance between to us when the two atoms comes closer then the outermost electrons are interact to each other it means that the most of the energy changes are occurs only on the outermost orbital so there is no energy change in the first orbital the energy level for single atom or there is much more atoms the energy level is same so all the electrons if there are 10 electrons electrons 10 atoms come closer, closer to each other then all the energy levels are same 10 into 2 it is 20 electrons are allowed in this level okay so consider that if there are n atoms of silicon or n atoms of silicon are comes closer it means that there are two n energy levels are allowed if n atoms are there then each each silicon have two electrons in their first cell then for n atoms there are two n atoms are allowed okay and there are two n quantum states okay there are two n quantum states and they can filled by the two n electrons okay because in the first cell completely filled is found in the silicon after that second one is also the two n atoms because there are also also two electrons are allowed so there are two n two n quantum states which are filled by the two n electrons another one is the six n electrons and after that it is two n electrons and after that six n electrons in the last cell of the silicon six n energy states or quantum states are to be found only four out of them only sorry only two out of them are filled by the two valence electron but four n electrons are not filled four n energy levels are not filled they are empty in the case of silicon okay now these two n energy levels takes the same energy because these are the inter interior part of the nucleus interior part of the atom so they cannot disturb by the nearby nucleus again these two ones also not dis uh, disturb if we change if we discuss if we take some changes then energy levels either it is somehow above or somehow below okay now this energy level this energy level is allowed for the isolated system but this this energy level of the soul isolated system but when there are two more atoms are comes closer then one atom having gained some energy and above the above the mean line and one is the below the mean line okay this gap is approximately one electron volt in solids crystals number of atoms comes closer up to a distance 10 raised to power minus 10 meter then the energy level of the to, of the electrons is not much more than one electron volt so this is the allowed one electron volt now if we take only one mole of silicon one mole of silicon then in one mole of silicon there are 10 raised to power 23 approximate electrons number of atoms okay number of atoms are 10 raised to power 23 it means that all the 10 raised to power 23 atoms have 10 raised to power 23 energy states quantum states they allow the same electrons but their energy is not same their energy is either uh, somehow large or somehow less from the uh, actual value for the isolated system so these electrons are not allowed in this level some electrons allowed in the higher levels some electrons are allowed in the lower levels okay now if we come closer two atoms after that three atoms after that four atoms five atoms up to 10 raised to power 23 atoms come closer then there are 10 raised to power 23 levels each level have different energy so these levels are false in in between the allowed energy levels so these are the 
these are the lines which were very close to each other these lines are come closer to each other we cannot count the how many energy levels are there there is a pattern is seen here this pattern is completely looks like a band okay these lines these lines comes very close to each other and looks like a band looks like a pattern of the uh, levels okay if the pattern of these levels are very very close to each other then we can named it the band okay this is a band formed band formed okay this is the energy band okay uh, band is simply a formation of uh, if we uh, takes a line another line close to each other another line another line another line and there are number of lines which are very close to each other so we cannot count how many lines are there because lines are very come closer to each other they are touched to each other and we we looks we looks it and we feel that there is a pattern there is a pattern of uh, levels and this pattern is called the band okay now what happens with the next there are six unallowed quantum states if there are n atoms if there are 23 atoms 10 give power 23 atoms it means that uh, there are 10 give power 3 uh, 10 give power 10 power 23 uh, allowed energy levels these energy levels are also found in the same level so there is also 10 give power 23 lines are there we cannot predict them how many lines are there so there is again band is formed this is again it is called the band okay this is again a band is formed after that what about 3s levels again 3s level there are two one allowed quantum states are there so in this 3s quantum state again there are two one atoms uh, two one electrons are uh, allowed so they also fall somehow up and somehow down but the energy difference energy difference is more than the first one because these are the outermost electrons mostly affected by the nearby atoms so that's why energy level is increased it means the difference in the energy levels is much more so that's why this band is this band is the width more than the first level okay so now now what what is what about the last these last subcell uh, electrons there are only two electrons are there four subcells are empty four quantum states are empty so in this area most affected part there is a band again there is a band formed this is also called the band okay this is called also, called also a band but but in this area all the all the electrons all the four and electrons all the four and electrons there are not four there are two and electrons these two and electrons are falls in this area not in this area uh, i will discuss with the help of a graph later on in the next video i think uh, <coughs> these levels these electrons are settled down in the lower energy level and the upper part of this level is kept empty and we can name it after that uh, another band is formed this band is later on called as a conduction band one is the valence band these bands are called the valence band and these bands are called the conduction band okay uh, so uh, in the next video we are going to discuss how energy band splits for the uh, complete uh, solid or there are number of electrons are there in solids then energy levels are distributed their energy and after that their bands are forming in this chapter we just uh, discuss about some description about the chapter or uh, uh, solid state why we need semiconductors what are the three different different part, uh, materials allowed conductor semiconductor insulators and next video we are going to discuss about the in silicon atom how energy bands are uh, splitted and how their band is formed in the uh, semiconductors okay so thank you i hope you see the video and uh, for the last uh, two videos uh, all of the all of the students give a lot of love for me love to me that uh, video is very <coughs> interesting last two videos you uh, can see in the description link and uh, see the uh, video past videos of logarithm and uh, continuously uh, after two or three days the next video is